right, good evening. Uh, welcome everybody to our, our next installment, the April installment of our quarterly um, town hall event. We want to welcome everybody. Glad you all got a chance to come. As I stated previously, just before uh, when I gave the five minute notice, I uh, gave everybody note that there's refreshments over here, thanks to DECA and the, and the uh, APs folks. They brought us a little bit of pizza and some munchies and some water. What we'll do to start this off, uh, I'm going to give some, uh, some rules of the road in a minute here, but let me start by introducing uh, the front row, our honored guest, uh, General Hotmucker. Do you have any uh, opening remarks for us? <laughs> All right, everybody take five. Everybody wait while I write notes. 10, 15 minutes. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, one, thank everybody for coming out. And two, uh, talk to you about a couple things. One, and you'll hear it throughout here, uh, we're, at, we're really approaching the peak of the construction uh, season here, really the peak of probably the entire project, which will, the peak that will impact quality of life, as you know, which is really laying utilities and all those kind of things. So, I know it's inconvenient, uh, I know it can be difficult at times, I know you, you come to work or you come to go one, to one way to a place during the day and you're not quite sure if you're going to be able to go back that way at night, um, but, you know, it is what it is, and we have to do these things. We have to do this construction to prepare the utilities to accept the massive growth that's going in the new way. So I guess my message is I would ask for your patience because there's really no way around this, and it's the way it has to be. And there will be inconveniences. And I think, you know, you'll hear tonight from the, uh, the different venues, the, the, um, the, the little email that comes out every day, what do you call that? The, uh, Notes from the garrison. Those from the garrison. Those are that, those are your best um, your best source of information on anything. Um, I'd also like to put a pitch out there. Is there anyone new here? Their first town hall out there? No one. You wouldn't raise your hand. If you um, it put out a pitch for the United Club, though. So it's a spouses club here on Camp Humphreys. It does a lot of great things. Um, and it really improves the quality of life uh, for everybody on the post, uh, even for people back in the state who went to their holiday bazaar and bought a bunch of stuff from my wife and brought it back, so her quality of life was improved as well. Um, so I just encourage you to check it out and try to be a part of that. There's two other things that are sort of, uh, I've been involved with on the periphery that I wanted to let you know. If you've got um, boys in either high school or middle school that are interested in football, we're running a football camp in the second, third. I think the second is the high school, and then the third is going to be middle school. And there, there are some professional, former NFL players. Uh, I think one was in the Hall of Fame, actually. And then uh, several <coughs> coaches. We've been coaches for years that are coming here um, to help us over here. They've done it in Germany. So if you've got kids and you participate, I'd encourage that. The other thing is, and you're going to see posters about it in my last one, is Gary Sinise is coming to do a concert here on the 30th of May as part of Spring Fest. So I would ask you to come out for that. I'm a big fan of Gary Sinise's. I mean, he does, he's tireless for our veterans. Uh, I know that as of last October, he had built 33 houses for wounded veterans himself, raising the money and doing that. Um, and he's helped guys in my former unit that I was serving in and improved their quality of life. And he is coming over here at our request to do this concert. He'll be up at uh, Camp Casey doing a concert on the 29th, and he'll be down here on the 30th. Now, I will tell you, I was skeptical the first time I heard that he was an actor in a band, you know, it's like karaoke now. <coughs> but he really is good. He plays bass guitar, and he's really, really good, and the band is really good. So I would encourage you to bring your family out and attend it. over right there near the main gate, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so that's all I have. Does anyone have any questions for me? Shocker. Okay. All right, thanks, sir. Okay, as we, I know everyone said they'd already been to one of these, just in case you haven't. Uh, we'll go through every uh, every staff section and uh, every supporting tenant on post, kind of put out information what's going on, changes, etc. Uh, big thing is, like General Hutmacher said, uh, we're hitting the construction peak. You know, with the great weather. Comes also to be construction with. So there's going to be a lot of road closures and 
it changes to how traffic especially flows around the installation. And Public Works is going to cover that tonight also. So throughout this, so we'll go through all the directorates. At the end of it, we'll also uh, we'll have an dis uh, open discussion period. So you can ask any questions you want. If you don't feel free or, or uh, you don't feel okay standing up answering or asking questions, we'll have folks with 3x5 cards. You can uh, write your question down. You can send it up, and we can uh, go through it that way. And also, I want to I want to introduce uh, Colonel Richard Lindsay. He's the deputy commander for 121 uh, Hospital up in uh, up in Yongsong. We know that uh, that there's uh, there's there's been concerns associated with the medical care on, on Camp Humphreys, and he's here to kind of tell you some of the initiatives that are going on over the next actually over the next week or two, and often, and in extending out to improve uh, improve our medical facilities and also our service. So he'll also be open to any questions that you may have. Um, when we get to the open discussion. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Mike. I think that's my words to give out. Well, a couple of real quick things. Uh, uh, we are streaming live on YouTube, so uh, put your best face on, uh, uh, silence your cell phones so they're not ringing. Uh, it's going to uh, be posted onto uh, uh, Facebook. It's streaming live right now. That's, that's kind of cool. Uh, for those of you streaming live and checking us out, uh, you also have an opportunity to partake by asking questions on Facebook, at which uh, we'll review at the end and get an opportunity to answer back. So if you come up with a question, post it on Facebook, and we'll get an answer back to you. Uh, we'll get to the question and answer part, but we're going to turn it over to Mr. Whipple. He's going to recognize our volunteers of the quarter with the help of Sergeant Major McCoy and Colonel Contract. I'm going to ask if Sandra Lipinski is in the room. Yes, come on, come on down, please. Come on down. Come on, come on down. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll recognize you first. So this is Sandra Lipinski. She is a youth sports coach. Duty volunteer of the quarter is Captain James C. Mill from 32 GSS GSA. Our Katusa volunteer of the quarter is Sergeant Lee Young J from HHC USA. Volunteer of the quarter is Mr. Dennis A. Pulaski, and he's with the Boy Scouts. Time we have two units that we would like to award streamers to their guide on Alpha Company of the 607, 602nd, and also HHSC of the 532 MR. And the reason we're doing we're recognizing these folks is we actually exceeded the capacity for giving out streamers to the start, which is which is a good thing. I think we gave out 18 streamers that day, and now we've got three more to give out. So we had about 400 to 500 participants on our last chart run. Excellent awareness of, of, of around the entire community for uh, sharp words. So thanks again.
starting with DPTMS. Good evening, I'm Mr. Rich Sayers for DPTMS. Uh, this is the Garrison Operations Director. If you haven't done so already, please attend our newcomers briefing. It's every Tuesday at 9 o'clock at the Super Gym Conference Room. It's on the first floor. If uh, that Tuesday falls on a holiday, we hold the briefing on the very next day. Pre and Head Start program is a USFK directed program, mandatory for all incoming military personnel to attend within 90 days of arrival. It's a three day program sponsored by the city of Kung Tech. It features classes on Korean history, government, local life and culture, etiquette, and basic Korean language. Spouses are encouraged to attend. However, this program is not uh, for children. You'll have to find a babysitter or use our CDC. Uh, on the slide is the dates for the next town hall. You can find a lot of emergency information, uh, emergency preparedness information by searching online, but our emergency manager, Mr. Park, can give you a brief upon your request. Next slide. Please share the roads. Soldiers must train and space is limited. Please keep your speed down to 10 miles per hour when passing soldiers in formation on the roadways, and that's 17 kilometers per hour if you're in your Korean car. We'll start getting more and more rainfall as we enter monsoon season here in Korea. Generally, it falls between June through September. Uh, Camp Humphreys has been fortunate in the past several years as, and has not uh, been in the way of the typhoon and the direct path, but please be aware of this potential weather threat. We have several methods of alerting the community and getting out warning and emergency messages, including the giant voice speakers, the interior building speakers, and through social media. If you hear the sirens go off over the giant voice towers, the loudspeaker system, it only means one thing, uh, that is to get inside. Please move indoors and await further instructions. Uh, we call this shelter in place, and we use this uh, method to address many potential hazards. You can sign up for the telephone alert system. The applications are available in the back for those who wish to receive an automatic phone call or emergency messages that also include school, school closures and road condition uh, changes. Next slide. The next big theater-wide exercise is focused passage, which is a non combatant <coughs> evacuation exercise, or NEO. Ensure your family knows who their unit appointed NEO warden is and contact that person for information on what is required of you to support that exercise. The dates in red are Korean holidays, and the dates in blue are U.S. The 16-hour resiliency training is required for U.S. soldiers. And uh, June 15th is our garrison change of command. I'll be followed by MWR. Evening, everyone. John Claycomb from MWR. Um, I've got 20 plus events to cover here, so I'm not really going to try to fill you on everything that's going on. I just want to make a mention of, of the things that are on the slides. Uh, so to get started, the 25th is the Amazing Race. This is uh, maybe fourth or fifth year we've done this. I just want to mention uh, about that, that uh, uh, you can sign up here at the CAC. Uh, and the first place is uh, round trip uh, airline tickets anywhere in Asia for each member of the team. And second place is uh, uh, KTX tickets for each member of the team. So it's certainly worth looking into. Uh, we have our annual volunteer recognition ceremony here on April 22nd at 6 p.m. Next slide, please. Uh, I want to mention uh, on May 2nd, we have a mother-son dance. And we do this mother-son, uh, father-daughter dances uh, a couple times a year. General Huttmacher mentioned the USA Football Clinic on, on 2nd and 3rd of May. Um, uh, the, just to kind of clarify there, on the 2nd, it's open to 8th through 12th graders. And... Uh, and then uh, on the on the third, it's uh, seven seven ages seven through sixteen. The clinic on Saturday is a little bit more for uh, skilled players, and the clinic on Sunday is a CYS type uh, clinic where we're trying to get kids involved. 
Um, we have a new spring menu uh, happening. Uh, we're going to launch at <coughs> at the Alaska Mining Company on the fourth. Uh, I mentioned a few things. Uh, we're going to add to the menu for the summertime a cranberry chicken salad, a feta turkey salad. Uh, we're going to have a Malibu chicken flatbread pizza. Anyway, turkey green chili sandwich so you get it. That we're, we're trying to lighten up the food for the summer and, and keep the menu interesting. Uh, the Wizard Oz will be performed here uh, May 8th and 9th and 10th here at the CAC. Really, really worth seeing. The theater group does a great job. Uh, spring is strong, 5K, 10K on May 9th. We have a reverse triathlon that uh, is at the Splish Splash on May 23rd. Uh, Splish Splash is opening uh, just after the, uh, the reverse triathlon, I think, on the 23rd. So that's the opening date for that one, uh, uh, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, spring Fest, uh, again, Gary Sinise will be there uh, we, uh, in the evening, 6 to 8. Uh, we have a lot of great entertainment on that on that day, and lots of stuff going on at, at the Spring Fest. Food, all kinds of different things out on the Independence Park field. It's gonna be great. Uh, here's our father-son dance, uh, father-daughter, sorry, on the uh, 6th of June. Uh, happy birthday, 5K on the 13th. Um, uh, superhero brunch on the 20th. Uh, Blossom Beach Blast, the 26th, the 28th, Teen Jam, the 28th through the 30th, they follow on. That happens at Yonko Beach, and then the 4th of July celebration that we always have uh, will be on the 4th. Uh, there's a uh, Summer Blast Fun Run, a Father-Son Day at Outdoor Rec, and I just want to mention the last couple of things that didn't make the slide. Uh, May 10th, we have a Mother's Day brunch at Alaska Mining, and we have... Uh, May 15th, we have a comedy tour at the Flight Line, and that comedy tour is moving to Suwon on May 16th. So, uh, thanks for your attention on that. I want to, uh, I'll, I'll be followed by Derek Hall from PAIO. Um, Peter Hall from the Garrison Plans Analysis and Integration Office. I'll provide information on transformation and service provider temporary moves. Starting with transformation, we and our host nation partners are building 655 new facilities to accommodate young sons and area one relocation to Humphreys with a land increase of 2,300 acres and a shared cost of 10.7 billion. There are no major unit moves scheduled to occur in calendar year 15. We expect the latest 8th Army unit movement order to be released by the end of month, May 2015. The Region Transformation Office was recently renamed Humphreys Transformation Office. The HDO is a team of Garrison employees dedicated to all things Humphreys Transformation with their office located here on base. Next slide. This slide shows two community support services scheduled to move within the next 90 days. First, the 65th Medical Brigade move slash expansion will transfer certain operations into building 370. This move will free up some space within the clinic that will be converted into additional primary care exam rooms. The second move on the July time frame is our chapel <coughs> operations. They will temporarily re re relocate from the main coach chapel to building 577 on the first floor. As we progress through transformation, this brief will continue to increase and include more temporary and end state moves relating to community support services. And with that, I'll be followed by DPW. Good evening. My name is Dennis Pulaski. I'm the Director of Public Works. <clears throat> this slide here shows major projects on the installation. Right now, there's uh, 16 major projects. In the next few months, we'll add three. Those are the ones that are shaded in gray. And we really reach our, our peak in terms of number of projects on the installation. The five in green are projects that are nearing completion, and we'll soon see them co complete. So we truly are at the peak construction here, and in terms of inconvenience to the community, uh, we're there. And so, uh, but it's going to start getting better as we complete these facilities. We already heard some comments about infrastructure and the road construction. By the middle of May, we will be at the peak in terms of inconvenience to, to the community. 
and we try to take every effort to uh, mitigate, minimize those uh, inconveniences. But again, it's the, the price of progress. And so between the middle of May until December, we're going to be kind of like at a status quo in terms of inconvenience, um, in terms of the road construction, in terms of the utility infrastructure. Uh, but if you can hang in there with us, uh, you know, starting by about the end of the year, we're going to see roads opening up, a lot less closures. Um, and so the next five to six months, seven months, those are really the, the, the tough months to be around here. But if you can deal with driving around the post now, I think you'll do just fine. Uh, next slide. Uh, just a list of some of the closures I'm going to cover. Go ahead and go to the next slide. We've had a couple road closures up in the MP Hill area. They'll continue through May. <coughs> Next slide. Super Gym. You know, it's always a mess over in that area. Whenever we're going to be done, we'll be done. Sometime. <laughs> so we're on phase five right now. I'm not going to tell you how many more phases we've got. You know, just keep coming back each quarter and we'll, we'll keep you updated. But, uh, I think everybody's aware of the real significant kind of, uh, closure there on Perimeter Rose Road, and uh, that's a long one. That's going to be until you know summer of, of of 16. You see there on the trail or on the chart there, pedestrian path going around the Super Gym area. Got the detours there. Go ahead, next slide. So. Uh, 14th Street, that's over by the MP Hill area. Uh, that's going to be opening up, you know, right about the, uh, on a good time, the middle of May, because uh, we, we will be closing down what, which is called the Future C Avenue, the road there over by the Air, Air Ops facility, over on the uh, north side of the uh, Signo and the uh, MP BMFs there. That section of the road has got to get closed down, but when, when that's closed, we'll have 14th Street bypass opened up. Next slide. So this chart just kind of brings together those those closures. Uh, you know, so I've got some dash lines there. They're shown in, in, in green, kind of show you how to get from the one side of the installation to the other side of the installation. Uh, and it does amaze me how I, I continue to meet people that aren't aware of the CFM bypass. It's been open uh, for quite some time, se several months. And uh, I am noticing, of course, now with the, free, the perimeter road closure, more traffic on the C Avenue bypass. So again, you know, this, this is about the worst it gets. If you can live with that, starting about 15 May and just hang in there, it's just going to get better. Okay, next slide, last slide from DPW. It's, it's just a, another partial road closure, and that's going to be over by the Morning Calm Conference Center, which is under, under construction. And that's going to be another long uh, road closure starting here uh, ne next month. I'll be followed by the Garrison Safety. Hello, everyone. I'm William Hansel, the uh, Installation Safety uh, Manager. I uh, just got a couple of things. Uh, I want to cover spring uh, summer safety. Uh, heat injuries is just hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Uh, camping, hiding. Uh, Skating, I'm seeing the uh, kids out here starting to hit the road with the skateboards and the skates. So parents and uh, commanders, please put it out. Let's reinforce it. we got to wear some personal protective equipment, uh, helmets and those things, and let's protect our children. Driving safety, uh, let's try not to drive by with the feet. We've got the holidays coming up, so let's try rest. And then, uh, as they said, construction vehicles. Uh, I'm sure everybody's experienced at least one big, big truck out here. So please pay attention and, of course, watch your children while they're out there sometimes these trucks are, are loaded they can't stop the time and then the home safety uh now that we're talking action plans and emergency plans is let's try to go ahead and uh, rehearse those as families if you can take some time out of your day uh, go over your fire drills and things like that and then of course uh spring cleaning as my wife always says comes checking these smoke detectors and smoke uh, uh, carbon monoxide so uh, please do that and of course you can get some more information on our website right here listed at any time and uh, thank you for coming. That's all I have, and I'll be followed by DPS. Hello, I'm Jeff Thomas. I'm the Emergency Services Director. Um, these are our office closures uh, for the next quarter. That's Pass and ID and Building 544 and 724. 
and the Military Police Administration Office. Next slide. 911, I think most people know that we don't have an automated 911 system. If you have an emergency call from a commercial line or a cell phone, 031-690-7911. It's important that you know your, place, your location, which is a building number, um, not a unit, a building number, and then a good callback number. Uh, DBIDS registration. We're coming into the summer rotation months. If you AIP'd or extended in some way, make sure that you go to the Pass and ID office and adjust your DROs. Um, you don't want to be archived in DBIDS. Um, next slide. As was mentioned before, a lot of people are riding bicycles in the summer months. Make sure you have the proper safety equipment. In daytime, you need a helmet. And at nighttime, you need a helmet or reflect the vest in front and rear lights. You have to register your bicycle. Please don't ride on the sidewalks unless you have small children and ride on the right side of the road. You can register your bikes at building 544. That's the one-stop center on the first floor in Pasadena. And I'll be followed by the legal office. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Stell. I'm the OIC for the Camp Humphreys uh, Consolidated Legal Center. Uh, we just have the one slide. Uh, the hours are there. Uh, I'm not going to go through a lot of the details that are on the slide. They're pretty self-explanatory. Um, our location and uh, everything else that's there. Um, the, uh, one comment about our lunchtime hours, uh, we do have limited services now during lunch. Um, we are open at the Legal Assistance Office uh, during that 12 to 1300 time frame. Um, so if you have issues, you can't uh, get a hold of anyone or you want to come by, that's the best time for you. For any of your soldiers, uh, we are open during that time. Uh, for the time being, uh, we've recently added that hour uh, to the schedule. Um, as far as the, the services, we do offer a full range of services for members of the community. Uh, legal advice on personal matters, uh, any, anything at all really, um, sort of criminal uh, issues, uh, those are handled, uh, handled elsewhere, but we can help uh, connect you with those services as well, if those are the types of questions that you or your, your soldiers are having. Um, we uh, also have the tax center, that's the last thing I'll plug here, the tax center is open until the end of June. Uh, one comment though, and that is that uh, everyone overseas, people probably know this, um, you have an automatic two-month extension from the April 15th deadline that applies for personnel that are overseas. Uh, so you can file your taxes up until June 15th without any sort of uh, any, any issues. Um, one caveat to that, however, and that is that if you owe money, uh, that extra two months does not, uh, it's not two extra months for you to pay the money that you owe. Um, you would accrue interest if you wait to file. Not our rule, it's an IRS rule, um, but that is essentially how it works. But up until June 15th, and then for the next couple of weeks after that, until the end of June, we will, we will be open uh, for tax issues, tax questions. We can do electronic filing, completely free, 100% free, uh, to, to you, uh, to your soldiers, to the family members. Uh, so any, the phone numbers are there if there's any questions uh, or anyone would like to make an appointment. Uh, things are very slow now, uh, after the April 15th deadline has passed. Uh, so generally, you could walk in uh, now if you need uh, information or want to get your taxes. And one last thing, and that is I have with me back in the back, Captain Hicks. Uh, she's one of our legal assistance attorneys. Um, she's here tonight if anyone has any, any questions. Uh, she has the power of attorney, notary, paperwork there with her. If anyone has uh, that type of need, uh, she's happy to help you out here this evening. And, uh, we are actually, this is Captain Hicks' last uh, town hall meeting. She'll be mad at me for pointing this out. But she's, we're losing her next week to greener pastures in Germany. Uh, she's been here for the last year. Uh, so but she's here tonight to help out. from the health clinic. So, you know, known as the PCMH Patient Center Medicine. Mm -hmm. New concert, concept for military medicine. So, and we're in, putting it in place here in Korea. So, works really well. So currently, we, we, in the last couple of months, we've been hiring new folks so that will help with our throughput. Recently, we brought on five new MSAs to work the front desk so you can get checked in quicker now instead of having a line that runs out the door. Now we're able to get you in quicker. We're also bringing on some new 
nursing staff to help support the PCMs so you can get through to your provider quicker as well. So it should cut down on your wait time to get in and see your provider. Um, we also have been authorized to announce for a civilian physician to be here as well. So we put that forward this week. That means we'll be able to see patients now on Thursday morning through the sergeant's time as well as on all of our military training holidays. We'll have a, a civilian working those days. So that'll open up about 100 more appointments per week that we don't currently have when we have them come on board. Of course, we know we with CPAC that may be a minute or two, but at least the, the process has started. As you know, summer is PCS time. I'm, all of my providers are leaving. 100% turnover of providers over the summer, starting the 1st of June through the 31st of, or through the end of September. I'll lose all my providers. So they're all going to be new. So bear with this. There'll be a, a steep learning curve with them. So we'll work through that training process as they get, on, get comfortable and get on board. So you'll start seeing a new PCM. You know, that's the life of military. You'll get a new PCM. But the first one arrived today in country, so he should be in a clinic here in the next, next few days. We have got authorization. 121 is helping send over some help over the summer. Um, it looks like two right now throughout the summer times to help cover that overlap and underlap. So we're making those arrangements to get them on board. They should start showing up sometime early May to help some of our shortage problems. I'll let, I'll let Colonel Lindsay speak on the restationing overview. Yeah, thanks. I just wanted to also say, Colonel Reeves, uh, the commander of the hospital, really wanted to be down here. He's TDY off pen. Um, so he asked me to come down here to make sure that uh, we conveyed that we, we understand you, you have concerns down here. Um, you got a lot of changes going on just listening to some of these briefs um, that people have been putting out. So, so we, we hear it. We, we are, as um, Major Matthews is saying, we're trying as an organization, a medical organization across the peninsula to react to get you all better staffing uh, and the resources you need down here. Um, he, he hit on some great things, just hit on a couple couple more. Um, you know, they've been working tirelessly um, at the clinic and Colonel Hill um, trying to get additional hiring actions and the team that's, that's over here at the clinic. There, there's another 13 to 15 that are out there uh, in the pipeline. Some of them have been open for as long as a year. Um, some are recent uh, additions to the, uh, the hiring actions we have out there. But several psychologists, or psychiatrists, psychologists, um, dietitians, LPNs, RNs, um, medical support assistants, because okay? every single person in that clinic helps and works with each other to to be uh, to, to make it more effective and efficient in the care that's delivered. It's not just the provider that does it on, on their own. Um, so, so we'll continue to push that. Um, as he said, we got a couple of providers we're looking at um, moving internally. You got um, a PA that just arrived. The provider we're looking at bringing in from from up north is uh, either going to either going to be a family practitioner um, or a, a general medical officer that's really a peds um, person. So it'll either one of those um, will allow for more of the children to be seen. Um, that'll help a little bit of access there. Um, so, so we'll continue to do that. We're also trying to, to do a more of an enterprise approach. Things that we can gain efficiencies for and take off uh, the, the, the clinic here and allow them to do more hands-on care. Um, the, the central appointments appointing system um, kicked in a couple, about a month or so ago. Um, we're seeing some positive trends. I hope you all are seeing, uh, seeing that or feeling that, but the wait times for appointments um, from our automated system showing four minute average down to less than a minute average um, for answer or calls to be answered. That also helps at your front desk so that clerk at the front of the MSA doesn't have to decide am I going to take care of the person to get them checked in that's in front of me or am I going to answer the phone that's ringing there that, that's been ringing for however long, a minute or two. So, so we're trying to, to, to answer some of the concerns out here. By no means do we have everything figured out yet. Um, like you said, the summer over um, underage, we're trying to limit that. We're extending out some folks um, as much as possible to ensure that we have a, a good overlap. And then you got some great uh, folks that are coming in to replace those folks that are leaving out. A great team was here. You're going to have uh, great people coming in. Uh, so a couple, uh, at least one husband-wife team, a pediatrician and a family practice provider. 
um, coming in, great things that they'll be able to help add to the team here. Um, real quick, wanted to hit on our restationing. I know you, you all talked about uh, some of the, the um, facilities that are opening up. You see 65th Med Brigade headquarters and, and some of that other stuff, Building 370. Building 370, uh, thanks to the garrison uh, with supporting us on that, does, does allow us to, to get some additional um, primary care space in the clinic itself, uh, which will uh, allow, as troops move down or family members move down, we can move PCM teams with them and they'll have space to move into um, to take care of that, that population that's moving down here. So you're not just gonna get more people with no uh, medical staff, that medical staff that will move with them um, and, and we'll, we'll work that so that they're, you're, you're not just increasing without seeing any assistance coming. Um, the second floor of the current TMC, once the uh, new dental clinic gets their furniture, uh, we'll, we'll add in uh, um, some more exam rooms that'll allow us to, to have enough for the total restationing uh, of the folks until the new hospital opens. And right now, I'm, I'm being told January 2018 with the new opening date. Um, so, so that little ways off. Um, as an interim, I, I know there's a, a lot of interest in 24/7 care. Um, it's not really here right now. Um, internal to post, uh, the brigade commander has, has committed to uh, summer of 2016. We will have a 24/7 presence here um, with a provider um, that's that's in the clinic during all all the time. I mean weekend evening um, now will that that clinic stay open or that ambulatory care center stay open all the time probably not it'll be once the clinic closes normal appointments then the um, the ambulatory care center would open up to cover the, the rest of the night and, and the weekends and stuff so uh, we are committed to that we got to work on the resources um, we got a, a an initial financial commitment from Medcom um, to help pay for that but that's <coughs> Know, kind of the same thing as uh, attracting folks to to uh, to come here. Um, so we'll continue to work that. We're committed to getting you the resources though that, that you need here. And then the last one is uh, just host nation hospital. I know some people love it, some people hate it. Um, I think it depends on where you go, when you go, what the experience, what time it is. Um, so I'm not saying that it answers every single question, but there's some top quality care out there at a lot of those facilities. Um, my wife likes going there. She, she raves a, uh, on it. Um, the one that we wanted to, to make sure we brought up, and um, Major Matthews has already sent out his team, um, we'll be going down from the hospital uh, next month, is uh, Pyong Tech St. Mary's uh, Hospital. Um, if you haven't seen that, that's been, uh, it's right here. So good morning's right there. Um, so it's, we just drove, we stopped there on the way down here. Um, it's 18 minutes from out there, emergency room door, um, to the, the gate um, here on post. Um, so, it, brand new facility. Um, they got an international clinic in there. Uh, we went through the ED. There's uh, 20, 20 beds in there. Um, there's not a lot of uh, uh, people there right now um, since, it, since it's new. It opened in February, I believe. Um, so, it looks like a very good, good clinic. The uh, TRICARE team brought in uh, I believe what was it about 10 people that came in from Japan and Guam uh, to do a survey of it and, and make sure the quality was there. Um, so, so some good news gives you options um, to, to go to uh, that's closer than some of those ones like St. Vincent's or Dongook or um, the, those other uh, <coughs> hospitals and university hospitals that are a little farther away. So, um, Mr. Matthews, anything else? I would just like to add for the nervous moms and dads for this football play. My Captain Vega, my physical therapist, and her team will be on site both days for the entire time. So if you have an injury, she'll be right there to treat it right then. So the whole team will be there. So that should help some of those nervous mom words. I'll be followed by the dental clinic. Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, I'm representing the dental clinic. Uh, you can see our hours and when we're open, 7.30 to 16.30 every day. And our uh, front uh, desk phone number there, that's the best number for calling, asking questions, getting appointments made, uh, things of that nature. Um, currently, 
we don't have a, a whole lot of capabilities for the community who are mainly focused towards active duty soldiers at the, uh, in our current clinic. However, there are a couple of exceptions. Uh, if you are active duty and have a child that's 12 years of age or younger, uh, we do have a pediatric dentist on staff, so they can be seen. Just call that front desk number and we can get their information and get them scheduled to be seen. Uh, we also have hygiene appointments um, that are available for dependents of active duty soldiers, once again. Um, typically, it's going to be 7.30 in the morning because most of our soldiers are doing PT at that time. So um, there's 24-hour uh, advance notice on that, so call the day ahead. Uh, it's open to you. So very limited right now, we go to the next slide. Uh, we just touched on this. this is our new clinic that is 95% complete with the, the construction of the physical building itself. Uh, buying the equipment that goes in this building is ongoing, but uh, so we don't know exactly when it's gonna be open. Uh, but if you go to the next slide, uh, these are gonna be our capabilities once we are in that. It's gonna be the largest clinic in the Army around the world uh, by one chair and all of the uh, specialists on the peninsula will be in in this building um, in Hungary. So uh, a big boost in capabilities to these facilities. Hi, I'm Captain Alvarez from the Veterans Clinic on Post, and um, thank you for letting me come tonight. Um, and I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the services that we offer um, in our clinic. Um, there is a fact sheet with our phone number and our location and our hours of operation with a <coughs> if you want to pick that up. The majority of our patients do present to us for wellness care, you know, annuals, um, implanting microchips, that sort of thing, um, We and, and pet registration. We do see sick pets um, on a, uh, an outpatient basis, and we're trying really hard to open up um, some like next day or even same day uh, sick pet uh, appointments for those sort of urgent needs. We do have some options for referring you to off post facilities as well, and we have that information in the veterinary clinic. Um, next slide. As a pet owner myself, I would like to <coughs> implore you to please register your register your pets with us in the event of NEO, particularly in any volunteer voluntary phase, it's really gonna open up a lot more options for you in terms of where you could go with your pets if you have your medical paperwork in order. For example, uh, voluntarily evacuating to Hawaii or Japan you know, is only gonna be an option if you have the necessary tests and vaccinations and that sort of thing, unlike going to the, to the US. So, it is a garrison and housing requirement, um, but as a as a veterinarian, I mean, I, and a pet owner, I feel like there's even there are even more important reasons for for doing that. So just call the clinic, and we'll set up a five minute appointment for you to bring your paperwork in and make sure that you have everything that you need uh, to go. The the other thing that I'll mention is it does make it a bit easier for us to help you if your pet is ill if we have some information about them, some medical information about them in advance. So if they're registered with us, then um, you know, we have easy access to their record. Okay. Pet stores in many countries of the world offer puppies and kittens that are poor representatives of the breed, to put it very kindly. And Korea is no exception. We do see pet store puppies that are sick with contagious disease, vaccine preventable diseases, um, parasites, um, have a lot of defects that they're born with because of um, some uh, substandard breeding programs. Um, and, and we do end up treating these puppies and kittens in the, in the clinic. And it is really heartbreaking for the people that, that get them. So we would like to encourage you to adopt a pet there are many shelters out there, and on the back of our fact sheet is a list of all the shelters that are available. And then, of course, you'll want to register them with us within 10 days. So we're just um, asking you to step away from the puppies. I will be followed by the chaplain. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Chaplain Tompkins. I'm the uh, Deputy Garrison Chaplain. If you peruse the slide, I'm showing you tonight our uh, services and the ministries that we offer. 
<coughs> as was mentioned in a previous slide, uh, the Freedom Chapel will not last forever. It will be demolished uh, around the, well, we have to be out by the 1st of July. But our, we're building four chapels at Camp Humphreys right now, and one will not be ready by then. But please don't fret, uh, thanks to the high school and other facilities helping us out, services will not stop. We will have services in the building that was mentioned before, 577 is where our Religious Support Operations Center will relocate. And this will be happening here in the next several months, probably by the 1st of June. We'll have a decommissioning service at the Freedom Chapel and move into our swing space, if you will, until our first chapel is complete. If you can improve that, like I said, it's kind of confusing, 557 and 577. I promise I didn't do that on purpose. But these are our two buildings. Please just take note of that. But right now, this is where we're at. And we'll be here for about the next month and a half or so. And we'll put this word out uh, through all of our mass media and everything when we do make this move. The only thing I'd like to point out is we do, at the very last there, the on-call duty chaplain. Uh, we do have a chaplain, as most of you know, on call 24-7 to help you out. So if you ever need anything, just uh, call that. Thank you. I will be calling by these schools. Good evening. I'm Shelly Kennedy. I'm the principal of the high school. And with me is uh, Joyce Diggs, the principal of the elementary school. The first thing we'd like to talk about to you for you this evening is the PTEC visit. And that's the Pacific Theater Education Council. They will be coming to visit us in May. And this is the opportunity where they come and they check our schools, they see what we're doing, what we're offering, and they also need input from parents and the community members. So they've set up their time, will be on um, May 14th at 1.30. There'll be a special meeting. We encourage you to attend, especially if you have questions or concerns about the education that your children are getting here at Camp Humphreys. And then some information from our elementary school, some important dates. Wednesday the 29th is a PTSO meeting at 2.45 in the cafeteria, and they appreciate everyone that can come in and help with that. Thursday, May 11th is our SAC meeting. It's also open to the public. It begins at 2.45 in the cafeteria. And then the 13th is a PTSO meeting at 2.45 in the cafeteria. We're going to meet a lot. May thir uh, 14th is the acceleration date for anyone PCSing. This is true of both the elementary, the middle, and the high school. This is the date by which, or it's especially important for high school credit. You cannot earn a semester of credit unless you go at least through May 14th and you do all of the work required for that semester ahead of time. So it's a lot of work on students, but if you get that in, uh, get those requests in, the teachers will work out an education plan for you to make sure that everything can get done so that your student gets the credit that they should get for the course this year. Friday, May 15th, the elementary school has no school for students because we're going to have math awareness training. And then Wednesday, May 20th, the progress reports will go home. And Monday, May 25th is Memorial Day, so it's a federal holiday. And Friday, May 29th is the Teacher in Service Day. So it's CSI for teachers. Go to the next slide. I'm not going to read all these dates to you. The high school's busy. We have lots, lots of good things going on, but what I really want to point out is re-registration. That occurred in March. We're still missing some families. Is the elementary school missing them as well? Every family needs to re-register. It's very important because this is how we get staffed. You know, so we can't get enough teachers here. If we think 100 less students are going to be here, then they're not going to staff us for those 100 students. So it's very important that we get re-registered. Even if you're moving, re-register so that we'll know and we can keep our database up so that when we need additional teachers, we can get them in time. And then the other thing I really want to point out is this Friday is the Far East Honors Music Festival concert. It's at 6 o'clock in the high school auditorium, and you're in for a treat if you can come. It's free, and it is the best talent in Japan, Okinawa, Guam, and Korea. These high school students had a tryout. It was selected only by blind tryout, and uh, they're very good, and they put together a concert that you will not believe as high school students. So if you have time, please come by and enjoy that. It will be a performance of a lifetime. I won't say that about our talent show on the 28th of April. <laughs> we don't know what we'll have on that one. 
But again, um, we're expecting all the exciting things of any high school. We have our prom coming up. We have a fine arts music night that's also free for everyone, and that's um, kind of like art in the park. We have a courtyard, and you can go there, and uh, students will perform music, drama, art will be displayed. So it's just a really nice night. Hopefully the weather will hold out for us. And then on May 22nd, that's our field day. If anyone wants to volunteer and come help and stand out and play and do games, we're, we welcome you. And then we're out of school on Memorial Day. And then, I think the biggest day for most kids this year is June 5th, graduation for all of our seniors. We're very excited. And that will wrap up our school year. And now I'm going to turn it over to Decca. Good evening. I'm Mr. Kimball with the commissary. Uh, the U.S. poultry uh, embargo that's been in place uh, by the Korean government continues. Uh, no U.S. poultry products, eggs. Anything containing poultry is not going to be allowed to the country. We have local uh, poultry and eggs or fruit sources <coughs> available. Uh, <clears throat> we don't expect this to end anytime soon. Uh, other than that, I have a sidewalk sale scheduled for 15, 16, 17 May. Items, uh, a minimum 30% savings. Uh, most of my vendors uh, indicated today that they are going to mark their items down to 50%. So it'll be a good opportunity to stock up on some of the uh, non veritable items. Uh, that's all I have. And I'll pass this over to Mr. Pickett. Good evening. I'm Steve Penn with the Exchange. Um, for us, we have a Bose road, se road Show sale on May 1st and a Sony sale on the 15th of May. Those are on road shows where we have some specials on those. And then on the 29th of May, we'll have an ice cream uh, eating contest at Baskin Robbins. So please stop by for that. The last thing I want to talk about is the uh, poultry ban embargo. It's starting to affect a lot of our facilities. Um, right now, Charlie's Steakery, we don't have any chicken there at all. Uh, we're looking for local sources. Don't really have a give well date. Um, also affected is Burger King, some of their chicken products. We don't have local sources for our buy-in team out of Okinawa is looking for sources. <clears throat> we were able to find some for Popeye's chicken because their, their chicken is, is not being able to allow it in, so we found a local source for that. Um, there was an increase in price because it's much more expensive locally. Uh, again, we're trying to find avenues to alleviate it, but it's becoming a big problem at, at a lot of our food facilities. So please bear with us. And that's all I have. All right, uh, that concluded the, uh, the plan discussion. Now we're going to have a little open discussion. Sir, I'm going to start it off. We have a question from our Facebook fans. Uh, Regina Uptanen uh, writes, are there, this is for you, Don, are there any uh, pools, options for children's swimming lessons at, do, uh, at any of the pools on post? Um, I don't think we do have any children's uh, swim programs uh, just now. Uh, but let, let me look into that. I, I'll get your, your address or a way to contact you and get back to you. I don't know right now what exactly we have planned for the summer. In previous summers, we've had some swim lessons uh, uh, at, at the um, Splish Splash. But I don't know. I can't honestly answer you, but I'll definitely get back to you on an answer. All right, Regina, we owe you an answer. Uh, now we'll open it up. Got another card? All right, may we have a car wash rack for POVs or a contract with people to wash cars like in uh, Yongsong? It goes to you again, though. Well, uh, actually, uh, I might defer that to Steve Pena. Steve, have you got plans for uh, a car wash? We went out and, and tried to solicit a couple of vendors, so we still are looking, actively looking for that. Uh, the problem with that is right now is to try to find a facility to, uh, to handle the wastewater, quite honest. So we'd have to look for like a steam option that they have at, at Home Plus. And we talked to a couple vendors, but nobody stepped up to the plate to do it. So we're actively looking, but so far no success. And one of the big things with the car wash is you got to have a oil water separator. And we lost that back when we took the spray wash out maybe two years ago, maybe two and a half years, however how long ago it was. So <clears throat> even... We have to get a waiver from USFK to allow FRGs to run uh, 
car washes in front of our headquarters company from now on, you know, because technically it doesn't go with the environmental guidelines. So they're kind of cracking down on it a little bit. Um, you know, it's, 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 you know, with that whole water separator, it's kind of a, kind of a tough hurdle. So we are trying to get past that. There are a couple places though, just off post, you go straight out the front gate, there's a Brazilian restaurant there right left, you turn right, you go about an eighth of a mile, you got a spray wash right there. Or you turn right or right outside the gate, go down to the golf range, and right before you turn left to go to the range, uh, there's a, an automated car wash, it costs 6,000 more. So there are some options on post. Um, we will continue to look for on post options, but it, it's, it's, it's a little tougher than, than you think it would be. A little bit of a long-term option is, you know, as will be the case with many things, is there's a, a, a car wash scheduled for the new auto center, which will open in 16. Sorry, I can't tell you any better news than that. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, I think somebody's bailing out a car, but we have questions, sir. How you doing, uh, sir? I want to address the issue of the dog parks and the old housing, specifically old housing. I have some notes, so I don't miss anything. Uh, it's getting hotter, and there's dog poop in the grass to a significant amount that it is uh, not healthy due to, you know, uh, puppies, as you spoke about. Um, it costs a lot for us to bring our animals from, Korea, from other countries to Korea. And a lot of us have uh, a lot of family ties with our pets. And the ne negligence of other people's uh, inability to pick up their fecal matter of their dogs and irresponsibility. I have tried to address this with um, the housing representative, Ms. Sarah Williams, and I got that without proof. Uh, I have to fill out a form with a proof and pictures and uh, time and date to have something done which she could not specify what would be done but I am a soldier I don't have time to stalk people take pictures out of my balcony to watch people over the dog parks because there's four of them and it's about the PCS season here and we would like or me my family and friends that have come here tonight would like to know what we're going to do to try to change this adjust this and to make it better for the our little ones. Yeah, what's your name? Sergeant Peckman, sir. Sergeant Peckman. You know, okay. From, uh, three two Delta. That's okay. I got you. Hey, I agree with you. Okay, I've actually went over to your housing area and picked up the dog poop myself a few times. Uh, you're welcome. Um, you know, there's about two percent of the people out there that just can't figure it out. You know, and then there's kids who just do kids stuff. You know, my kids A B C just. Um, it doesn't sound like you're a CID officer, so I don't, so I don't expect you to take pictures and, and do all that. Uh, I'll talk to uh, I'll talk to Beth Wilson. Uh, it shouldn't require a full, you know, 32-page packet for me to, you know, send a shot over the bow on someone that's not fulfilling their responsibility. But at the same time, you know, I only have a certain amount of folks that can can sit and watch, you know, certain things. And there are there's some. I'd rather be watching you know, speeders and stuff like that, you know, versus people not taking a bath with their dogs. If if you see someone, and I know everybody, and everybody knows everybody in the housing areas, if you see someone doing it, though, and it's it's you know Sergeant Conkright or whatever, tell the housing office, and you know, and we'll 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 send a polite shot over the bow. I have a lot of authorities when it comes to housing, and so um, like I said, just just do that. But I don't want to get into is some green on green stuff <laughs> where two people are mad at each other. But uh, that's why she's probably asking for a, a few more details. But uh, you're right. Um, and uh, I think that you know, we, we've done this before. We've sent out a few warnings and things kind of cleaned up. And I thought I was going to get out of here without another dog poop incident. But <laughs> so uh, I just ask that you and the other tenants, if you see it happen, just tell us who did, and it, you know what, and and just don't don't send us anonymous. We need to know who you are so we can talk to you about it. Uh, but we'll keep your name, you know, out, and then we will address it with that person. They won't pick up after that. Um, 
Is that fair enough for right now? I actually had a plan at one point to have this DNA, working with this DNA director called Food Prince. And so we we're going to take a DNA sample of every dog when you brought it into the vet clinic. We might, and hope, maybe, my, maybe my relief to do this. And so uh, and you have a guy in the white uniform with a big tongue. He comes out there, he picks it up, puts it in the bag, sends it off to Food Prince. And we know it was a little skippy to fit. And then, we, and then we find it. But I'm not kidding. I mean, I was so fed up with a dog. I mean, that, that was almost the point I was going to get to. So uh, that might be another option. A lot of large co apartment complexes in big cities are going in that direction. But it would cost each of the, each, it would cost $40 for each dog to do that in addition, you have the DNA sample, in addition to the chip you're getting. So it's something we might revisit also. I don't know, sir. I paid uh, roughly about $4,000 of loan in shipping my dog from Germany over here and having to get him a European passport, an American passport to bring him over into Korea and all that, that chaos and stuff. And I know others that have high value dogs and that have been members of their families for many years uh, would hate for something to, to go wrong because Joe Snuffy in apartment 311 or whatever, or the many other apartments that are in my building that, you know, again, I don't know their names. I just see them out there, don't pick up their dog food. And I, I confront them and they know me as the asshole. Sorry, they know me as the jerk. <laughs> down on the first floor that's watching that one dog park. But it's not just my dog park. You're a good it's NCO of Hogan Standard. Roger, sir. Right. So don't feel bad about that at all. Oh. Do, you, do you have any recommendations that, that haven't been thought of? Well, I, I don't, and I was really trying to address that with some of my friends because you don't come with a problem and no answer. But I don't know what to do. I have tried to adjust it through my uh, building manager. I've written emails to, uh, to housing. And now I'm here, and I figured this has to be the last step. So I've tried, you know, my avenues and my lanes, and I've even confronted individuals myself, and I know others have. And I've talked to them, I've sworn at them out the damn, uh, the darn balcony, and I'm like, what, what do you need? Do you need dog park bags? And yet, they still can't pick up. And these are grown men and women. If I can do it, and I really have a problem with it, but I do it out of respect for others. Yeah, I can tell you that, um, like Colonel Humphrey said, there has been a whole lot of discussion on numerous occasions about this um, from a lot of people, and you know, even at our house with the uh, senior spouses on post, we've addressed it on numerous occasions. And you know, barring having someone come and physically watch the location. The best solution that we could come up with, minus the food prints, was to, you know, for someone to submit a photo to housing with the information. Because without that, you can't, you know, really do anything. Yes. And I know that this was a problem up in one of the other areas. And in the end, they said no more dogs, period. So it's, it, it, it's not an easy solution. I mean, if anybody has any recommendations, please submit them. You know, I mean, it, we just, there's no solid answer. Yeah. I, I have actually taken photos of these people, and then they're saying that this is not an appropriate photo. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Take a picture of the dog grabbing and the guy not picking it up? I don't know. Just send me the photo. Thank you. Send me the photo. Will do, sir. All right. I'm on globe. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. All sir, right. Sir, sir we, have, um, we have cameras inside our building, or in our hallway. Is it not? It's where we can. CCTV, in fact, the, the lawyer, <laughs> he, he just wrote that down. I wanted to, I think he wanted me to say that, but I wanted to look into it a little bit more before I opened my mouth and committed to something. So I had the uncommittal look. Which and, and not everybody is educated, most people are not educated on, you know, it doesn't matter what problem we, we can really cause, you know, and for poor dogs. And you know, maybe a little bit of education for the young families and our young kids. It's not just you know, fire and forget, you know. I got it. Okay, send me photos. I'll look at CCTV. Are you not going to say anything else, sir? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, you might want to use the microphone. Yeah. So you can go on the record. Uh, well, I think that I can talk loud enough. So thinking about CCTV, who is going to monitor it? Who? Housing. Housing. They, they, you, you, are you going to hire an additional person to come and monitor that? And where's the funding going to come from? Those are the kinds of things that you have to think about 
when you have suggestions. And that's where the poo press came in because it puts the onus on the owners. So if you're going to bring suggestions, you have to look at all of the second, third, third and fourth order <coughs> effects and how it's going to affect the garrison, how it's going to affect the budget. You have to look at all of those things. So before you bring it, just make sure that you're looking at those things. And that's why, again, we wanted to put it back on the owners. If you're wanting to bring your pets over, then you're responsible. And that's where the poo prints came in. If it's something that you all want, then let them know. But the owners are the responsible the ones that are responsible. If you go out into the civilian sector, you don't have anybody monitoring with CCTV. You don't have them hiring an extra person. You don't have any of that. This, as much as we want this to be, you know, kind of a utopia, there are restrictions that we have. There are budgetary restrictions. And the garrison and the units, they have to fall under that. And you have to remember that. Okay. With that, uh, DES is going to look at, there are cameras back there, they're aimed in the other direction, I think, mostly, but uh, we'll see what we, we can do as far as panning back there. <coughs> and at least it'll be a recording. All right. So now, thanks for bringing that up. All right, sir. Uh, we got a lot of questions, so we're going to go to uh, Jerry Britt's question. Who can DOD civilians contact about getting routine medical care, RX in parentheses, at Camp Humphreys, I think this goes to the health plan. Was it? All right, I believe it's been answered. It's been answered online? Okay, excellent. So we don't have to answer that one. Does anybody need the answer to that? Not online? Okay. Next uh, question. Can we use the wash rack used by military vehicles? I think we're back to the car wash. I know that answer is already. I can see the shape. Go ahead. No. All right. the, the, the existing wash rack is, is uh, established just for military vehicles and military vehicles only. If a POV is in the area, then there's an incident or an accident, and there's government liabilities involved. So all POVs are excluded from utilizing the military wash rack. All right. Uh, another question. Can uh, we please install a visitor parking sign along the curb on G Avenue? Okay, so on the curb, opposite of the uh, family housing, I'm assuming. Uh, you know what? Yeah, we need, we, need, we need to do something about that. You know, whether you know it or not, you're not supposed to park on the near side of the curb, or the, or the curb closest to the, the newest Army family housing towers. You get in the way of the fire, the emergency services and stuff to do that. There's nothing that tells you you're not supposed to do that, other than the fact that it's not marked. But you can park on the other side. And so we probably need to do a better job of marking that. And so, uh, yeah, that's something that, uh, that we will do. All right, we got a yes. So, moving. Yeah, I ain't leaving. <laughs> <laughs> so, you get, no, I'm just kidding. But no, that's, that's the right thing. In fact, we've run into a lot of problems with that. So, yeah, that it, it needs to, it's not intuitive. Okay, it's a time contingent, yes. Uh, is it possible to squeeze more parking spaces, maybe parallel uh, spots, even one or two, near the one stop, even just one or two, um, something, something would free up the uh, lawyer spots. Moped Thank you. Spot. I'm sorry? Moped spots. Okay, moped spots. Want moped spots. <laughs> okay. Are we looking for moped spots? Stop. This is a one stop question. We'll take a look at that. It is, it is a crowded area. It's almost impossible to get a park, to get a, to, to park there. I know that. Ever since and, the unit went in over by um, an old education center, um, even that street is like all the way from there are the ATMs. Mm -hmm. We'll look. We'll look at that. So you're wanting, so you're thinking that if we had a couple of moped spots, we'd be able to open up some additional full yeah, space. Like today, full, it would have helped. Okay. Like like there's a big zebra stripe area. I don't know if they could maybe make that one more spot. That's my parking spot. <laughs> 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 now I got it. We'll take a look at that. Okay. 
spot for a moped. All right, that, that was all the cards I have uh, open for questions. Yes, sir, it's man. Let me get your mic. Hold on. <laughs> I'll go for it. Hey, hey, rules of etiquette for the for folks on Facebook that may want to follow. Please use the microphone even when you're asking or responding to a question. Okay. With, with all of the construction going on on post, it's been really difficult to give directions to where everything is located. Would it be possible to put signs up coming soon? Because we have a lot of places where I can see that there's something being built. And sometimes it even says it in Korean, but we don't know what it is. So like in front of the, <clears throat> excuse me, in front of the new dental clinic, coming soon. Yes. Yeah. Something as simple as that yeah. I think would help to um, Med Med ten. make people yeah. feel more comfortable with what is coming, excited about it, instead of complaining about just the construction. Plan. Okay, so here's the deal. I'll get you excited about what it is, but not when it's actually going to open. Right. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, put, I'll put what it is, but no date. So that, that sounds great. You know great. what? That's, and that's, that'll showcase things a lot better. In fact, I, I drive around with people all the time, and I'm like, I just make it up as I go along. <laughs> but uh, they'll probably help me on my tours. So that's a really good idea. All right, that was another yes. Other questions? Okay, it's my last town hall. You cannot let me get off this easy. <laughs> so, and we do have, Question. again, we have, we, oh, there you go. Yes, sir. I don't have a complaint. I have a... Hold on. <laughs> I, I don't have a complaint. I have a praise, and it's for the medical clinic. Thank you. Uh, do you work there? <laughs> but those, those people uh, here recently, I had a surgery on my kidneys, and uh, they really expedited. Just I got through really fast. I got through to a specialist in uh, St. Vincent's and Suwon, and uh, you know I'll come back across the world and have you know have it again if it, if it ever goes to that again. But uh, they really took care of me, and you know it helps get a little praise every once in a while. So thank you. <laughs> now, now, talking about the medical clinic, we did bring a big, big medical team down here, and I know uh, Colonel Lindsay gave a great brief and talked about all the things we're going to do. But are there any other concerns or issues or things you want to bring up with regards to our medical care here in Area Three? You can't let them get off. <laughs> okay. It's always me, I apologize. Um, just a suggestion, I think some of our family members might feel more comfortable with the Korean hospitals if they had some more information at hand about, you know, directions on how to get to them, what services are offered, when the English-speaking people are there, kind of, if there was kind of a one, a one-pager or something like that that would kind of help them feel more comfortable with the facilities. Um, you know, we have the new hospital, which you guys just talked about, which I knew nothing about. Um, so I don't know how that's going to get pushed out to the community to kind of know what other resources are available at the Korean hospitals might help raise that comfort level a little bit. Yes, ma'am, we're working on a trifold for that and uh, some maps to hand out at the newcomers group. The new hospital just came online last week, so we haven't had a chance to share that news yet. That's why that hasn't been announced yet. We'll get a copy and notes from Harrison and also post it on Facebook. Right. Uh, Sergeant Major just, just said, yeah, recognize newcomers are getting the information. Not everybody's getting it. We're going to get the, the notes and post it on Facebook and find other medias to get it out to you. But also, there's an American liaison, or there's an English-speaking liaison at all of the hospitals that we use. And if you're having difficulties, come by the clinic. We have a a driver that can get you to that position, or wherever that liaison may be. Um, we're having to rehire one, so don't come tomorrow. <laughs> we will have one on board soon. 
but there is an English speaking liaison at all of the facilities that will take you through the clinic, through the hospital, and will escort you around and get what you need. As well as if you go, if you're consulted to there, the driver who takes you there will take you to the liaison as well. So while that is an angst for many, there is one there who has passed an English test. And then any, any prescription that you receive there, you can bring it back to our clinic. We'll have a, one of our providers rewrite it into one of our prescriptions, and you can get it filled at our clinic as well. And, and the English speaking liaison, is that 24 hours a day at all the hospitals? That liaison is not 24 hours a day at all the hospitals. The question was, is the English speaking liaison at the hospital 24 hours? That is not the case. Go ahead, sir. They're, they're not there 24 hours, but the ED, I mean, that's primarily where you're going to go after hours if, if you're heading there. They, they do have someone on call. Um, so, so they're supposed to have someone that can speak English on uh, duty or have someone on call that they can call to. Just like the one we just went to with uh, St. Mary's, the new one before we got here. Uh, they have someone that's on 24-7 call um, that, can, uh, that can, they can contact and then use for interpretation services. I, I'm the first to admit, it doesn't always, the ED, it, it's, the provider probably speaks English, the nurses may or may not, um, and the interpretation service may not be ideal, but it, it, it does work fairly well overall. And also, sir, they can contact International SOS. They have translators 24 hours a day, and they can communicate with the host station hospital and relay information to the Okay, so, so she was saying for those that couldn't hear, uh, International SOS, the, the actual managed care support contractor, basically what you all would think TRICARE, um, has someone on call 24-7. But, but you, you hit it right on the nose, though. I mean, I know we do have educational um, pamphlets and stuff, but, but obviously if you're not seeing it, we need to do a better job. So, so we'll take that away also, not just for here. I hear the great things you all are talking about, about putting it on Facebook and, and some other locations. We'll look at it too, enterprise-wise, across the peninsula, how we can do a better job of getting that out there. Because we've got the information, we've got all the specialties and, and the times and uh, all this, <coughs> lots of information, but we obviously need to do a better job of getting that information out. And I would like to add, we've seen a couple of complaints where folks, for some reason, believe they're not allowed to go to a civilian ER during duty hours. That's not the case. You can always go to an emergency room and TRICARE will reimburse that because they reimburse emergencies. So you can always go to the emergency, it doesn't matter what time of the day it is. We prefer that you come to the clinic, but you have that option, you can go to the emergency room. Then if you'll come through TRICARE, we will assist you in getting that reimbursement. So instead of struggling through that on your own, please come to the clinic, we'll get you to the TRICARE and we'll assist you with that mountain of paperwork to get that reimbursement to you. So please don't feel as though you can't go because it's nine to five. You have that option. Again, we would prefer you try to come to the clinic, but you have that option. Uh, we have a, uh, a dog on post that, I don't know if the dog guess, but uh, that he's, we got here back in June. And he's been running wild since before that. He has a collar on his neck that's cutting into his throat. The dog's suffering, and he's he's he's, uh, he's aggressive, and he's he's very temperamental around around people. But uh, I know there's a capture kill over on this dog. I'm assuming, but, <laughs> but I I found the dog the other day. I ran a professional kennel for several years, and you know this dog he needs to be he needs to be caught and, and at least take off or something. I know what dog you're talking about. He is number one on the JPO right now. Well, I, I, I found him the other day, and I, there was two uh, canine units right there. I pointed out to him, and they gave me directions to go to DPW. I got there, and there was nobody that spoke English. Okay. Um, and so it was finally, they, uh, somebody called in these, and they ran him off instead of trying to catch him. Okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> what they're trying to do is the corner of the dog. Right, but this dog, this dog is, is not stupid. That, this is not <laughs> right, he's not stupid. There's an off-post service. The off-post fire department will come and tranquilize him and get rid of him. But the problem that we're having is the, the, 
dog takes off and he goes out the gate, and then we have to wait for him to come back. Right. Um, well, so can we at least instruct our MPs to, to, to have the number? They can call these people? They, 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 just do. they, they do have the number, and they do call them. <laughs> Well, the problem is that the fire department, the Opelous Fire Department, they're not going to come here unless we have the dog. So, you know, it, it, it's hard to get all that together at the same time. Well, this this dog is in our in our housing communities, and there's children that pet any old dog, and you know, uh, that's going to be a little consequence when you get a child bit. Uh, this needs to be a really high priority, and I volunteer to help. I know I can catch him. You allow me to. Talk to me. Mr. Thomas, when he referenced get rid of him, don't think anything bad from that. Okay, we have two questions from this gentleman right here. Hi, uh, my name is Greg. I'm the A civilian. Both of these are safety related. I think one of them is a command safety. The other thing is actually two safety. Um, there used to be a sign. This is my second tour of Korea. And, uh, the first time I was here, there was a sign on the road, I believe it's Elaine Street, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, it runs into Zachary Station. So you've got the bus stop on the corner and uh, the shop at on the other side. That street running directly into Zachary Station. This sounds kind of stupid, but there used to be a sign that says, do not walk in the street. And entirely too many people think that's a giant sidewalk. And it's common sense, but could we have a sign back maybe because somebody's gonna get hurt. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, have my staff, we'll go out tomorrow look at it. Yes, and if it's appropriate. I, I, it's active duty of civilians, it's contractors. And I've seen people literally directly across completely blocking the road, which is just insane. But the sign would be something anyway. Right. And sir, this I think this is maybe fan related. The parking lot at the gym, the Zeckler gym, is not the best place for people to be doing PT in the morning. Um, it's a safety issue for the troops in my opinion. I wouldn't want to do set ups on asphalt personally. Uh, leg stretches, things like that. Especially at 7 30 in the morning, cars coming, cars going, people jogging in and out of parking spaces. You've got lots of people coming and going. You've got people coming to the park. You've got people leaving from other PT areas, driving off. And again, somebody's getting hurt. I mean, literally jogging in and in around cars. It's dangerous. So the big parking lot uh, north of the track. And uh, yes, sir. The, 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 yeah. one, the yeah. one that's behind the gym. Right. Okay. That one. But not the one on the main road. No, it's the big parking lot, and it's it sounds kind of crazy again. I mean, I don't know who think that's a good idea. Okay. Do a sit up on the asphalt. Look at it. Dangerous. Thank you, sir. All right. Big hands, almost on a half hour. Any last questions, sir? Okay. Well, again, I want to I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, I'm sure some of us are PCSing this summer, so for those that are PCS, best of luck, and I hope your next assignments are great. And I hope you did have a, a, a fulfilling tour here at Camp Humphreys. I know it's, it was a probably interesting with all the stuff going on here, but um, I appreciate y'all's patience with all the construction activities that took place. For those that are hanging around, you do have some challenges over the next few months. And um, one of these days, this is going to be a a great post. It will be the most modern military post in the world. And uh, I can tell you that it doesn't go, doesn't go unnoticed uh, by the most uh, you know the most senior people on the peninsula that uh, that you guys are you know, you're, you're taking the brunt of the, the punishment associated with this transformation piece. And most of you won't see the, the post. You'll PCS <coughs> well before uh, it's complete. But uh, again, it's it's really appreciated. General Champo mentions it all the time. General Scaparotti mentions it, and so. Uh, and it's, it's greatly appreciated. So with that, um, wish you all a good night. Thanks again for coming, and have a great time.